Hey, hey, happy Thursday. I feel like we're, this is like crafting after dark edition. Uh, this is like the tutorial that never wanted to happen, but we are gonna paint some plaid tonight. We're making it work, right? So my name is Katie. If we haven't met before, if it's your first time watching, welcome, welcome. Uh, I love it. If y'all can share the video, if you know some friends who would love to paint some plaid, get crafty. Uh, also, let me know if you're watching on the replay. Give me some hearts and thumbs and that you're watching tonight. And I'm going to pull up the comments right over here so I can actually read them. And we're going to get rolling because we have some fun things tonight. So, like I said, I'm going to walk you through how to paint buffalo plaid. It's one of our most highly requested videos for sure. So like I did it an orange version earlier today if you saw that and we're gonna do black and white tonight and then we also have a giveaway going on. So stay tuned, share with your friends. Uh, if they like to stay up late, <laughs> they need something to watch, right? And I hopefully will have some comments over here shortly. This is one of those things I just like flew in the door and I was like, family, help me. Whoa. Help me, family, get my thing plugged in, <laughs> my phone, my lights, all that stuff because <sighs> we have the never ending volleyball game tonight. Okay, there's lots of you jumping on. See, I knew y'all wanted to paint plaid. Well, Angela's still awake in Kentucky. Liz is here. Cindy says good evening. Kathy, oh, thanks, girls. I'm so glad you're here. Glad you are here. I'm trying to figure out if the comments are coming from the top or the bottom. Um, okay, let's see. Looks like it froze on my side. Let's see. Okay, so girls, who loves plaid? Yeah, yeah, that's why you're here. <laughs> and okay, good. Oh, gosh, all of you. Hi, Sharon and Teresa and Rita. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, so I have this adorable little pumpkin cut out. Um, and this is available in our shop. So we, all of our unfinished door hangers, if you see me paint those, uh, you can snag those in our, um, on our website, <laughs> our virtual shop. I was trying to think of the word. Uh, so junkyjewels.com. If you ever want to purchase anything unfinished, you can do that there. I still got wet paint because I was slapping on a coat of just a creamy white base here so we can get started. Thank you for sharing, Mary. I appreciate that. Oh, cool. I I got 11 new comments. Wow. Jody and Mary Lou. Oh, April's here. And Bonnie says she loves plaid. Okay, great. Okay. So I think plaid, this is like a versatile skill to use because you're going to want to do fall plaid all the way through Christmas plaid, right? I think it works for all seasons. Almost. I mean, right? So, and I have an easy way to paint it. I've done kind of a few different plaid tutorials, but people still ask all the time. So I thought, I'm gonna dedicate one just to the buffalo plaid pumpkin tonight and walk you through how to do it. I do it in a way where you don't have to measure or anything like that, so it makes it pretty darn foolproof. So, okay, I got my white paint pretty well established here. So if you are having trouble, any trouble seeing, on my end it looks like I can see, I have my phone like horizontal, but if you need to swipe like left or right to move the comments so you can see what I'm doing here, I will talk about it and I'll try to lift it up intermittently, but I love to see what you're saying, so um, just that tip there. Okay, so you're gonna need some tape. Um, you can use any width tape, I have all the widths, right? So if you only have skinny tape, for example, you could double it up, um, and make it fatter. If you need like three inch ones, you can use, you know, three of the one inch tape. <laughs> Pretty full proof, right? Um, okay, so you're gonna put your first piece down. Wherever you have the tape down, that is where it is going to stay white. I don't have very many things I'm particular about as far as perfection, but I think the plaid looks better if the background color is along the edge. So I wanna make sure on the bottom of the pumpkin, I'm gonna start it with tape that is gonna stay down there because I want that to stay white. Does that make sense? Thumbs up, thumbs up. Alice, thank you. I enjoy doing the videos, just as you have them. So we're gonna put one piece of tape along there. So if you're doing a sign or a table or something that has a square edge, uh, this is a little bit easier. So I just kind of eyeballed the first one, no measuring, but if you have like a straight edge, then you can just line up your first piece of tape right along that edge and you'll start with straight, right? 
So this is why you don't have to measure because you're just gonna tear yourself a shorter piece of tape and this is how, how we measure. We don't have to measure anything. We're gonna line it up just as straight as possible to the next piece of tape, okay? And that's gonna serve as our guide for taping it off. So our first step is to, um, okay, I didn't tear that long enough, hang on. <laughs> uh, to do horizontal or vertical, whichever way you decide to start, you're gonna tape off the whole pattern. So it's gonna, we're gonna paint stripes first, one direction, okay? Oh, who is that? Somebody said they have the buffalo plaid um, saved, oh, my daughter and I did. I think we did um, the, like the, the, yeah, the buffalo, the red. Too. So every time I just pick up my little spacer, line it up, and make sure my next piece of tape just goes on just perfect. This is just a quick, easy way. This is what we do in all of our workshops. So those perfectionists who want some straight stripes, they don't have to, to measure anything either. I'm going to um, just put a piece of tape. I don't know. Let's see. I was trying to think if I want above, I don't know, I may block off my stem and do a different color, because we're doing the black and white. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like, step one. We got all of our stripes taped off. Then, whoa, I'm going to mix um, some black paint with a little bit of white paint, okay? So you want it to be a couple shades off, uh, so if you're doing a different color, obviously black is going to turn gray when I add some white to it. But you do want to make sure that you mix up enough that you won't have to try to color match in the middle of painting. So we'll see if I can do that. <laughs> so I'll kind of show you what my mix turns out to be. I just had some little containers here, so I'm going to use those. Kind of mix up a gray color, kind of a charcoal gray. I want to keep it decently. Okay, so that's kind of the color I'm going with. It's not black, <laughs> you know, a few shades lighter for sure, okay? Um, what kind of tape, Terry? I'm using painter's tape. This is the blue um, 3M painter's tape, but whatever kind of painter's tape you like. Um, I was even thinking, like, if you want really skinny stripes, you could even use, like, a washi tape or something like that, because I'll probably do another tutorial. We'll have a Paul plaid painting series because I think that tartan plaid or like the Burberry plaid with the thinner pinstripes uh, is really fun too. And, um, you know, we could use the washi tape or something like that. So, okay, so I'm kind of doing my style of buffalo plaid, which is not super full coverage. I posted some teaser pics and asked if you guys want to see me paint, paint plaid again. And um, this by far was like the look that everybody said, oh, I like that, okay? So it is, I'll show you what kind of coverage I'm doing. And the bonus to this is that it dries super fast, so this is gonna be an easy peasy thing. Okay. So see how some white is still showing through? It's not super coverage, full coverage, nothing like too thick coats or anything like that. I'm just gonna, Slap a paint a coat on, coat of paint on, and let it dry. Okay, so while I'm gonna take the other way in just a moment here, I'll let that dry a second. Why I talk about a couple things because we have a fun giveaway as I teased about um, when I started the video tonight. So my friend Catherine, I'm a Catherine too, but I'm Catherine with a K. She's Catherine with a C. I've never gone by Catherine in my whole life. If somebody says that, I wouldn't even look. So, <laughs> Katie it is. Okay, so did you guys see the cute monogram? Pumpkin, um, the lights are bright in here. Um, I posted a picture already to Instagram, but you're gonna go to enter into the giveaway is you're gonna go over to my friend Catherine's page. You can win one of her cute monograms and then I'm gonna give away a pumpkin door hanger as well. Um, so you just go over to Southernly Splendid. Let me type it in here. And she has a picture of the pumpkin and the monogram together, the orange pumpkin that I painted this guy um, with the monogram. So she has a monogram, uh, monthly monogram club. It's under $10 and she sends you three super cute monograms each month. Um, I don't even know how she does it. <laughs> uh, hang on. 
because they're so stinking cute and they have like multiple colors and layers. They're literally like mine says my initials on it, which you cannot see very good, but in the picture you can. So yeah, this is K T J. So my, my daughter saw it and she was like, what? It's so cute. But her laundry room inspired me to do the orange pumpkin and saw, um, she had sent me the monogram and so uh, I thought that would be fun to kind of partner with her so you guys can check out Catherine's page because I love uh, letting you guys know about other like girl bosses who are doing their awesome thing you know and Catherine is she's she's a boss at Pinterest she does she's really fun she does sonic chats I think she goes to sonic every single day like religiously <laughs> any sonic lovers in here <laughs> But, so after the video, you can just go over to Southernly Splendid and make a comment on her video. Give her a like if you're over there. And comment, and then we'll select some random winners. Okay. Hopefully I got it on there, and maybe I can even pin the comment. We'll see how technology likes me. Um... In comment look at that it's gonna go up to the top I think you guys are gonna see that so that's the link to Catherine's page yay okay so we've kind of got our streaky coat of charcoal gray on here okay I'm kind of dipping into the black I kind of like to add a few brush strokes again like my style I want it to be kind of rustic and dimensional so you guys can see where it's kind of not perfect, I always want you to see that. Okay, so we're gonna pull up this tape. Nice crisp lines, looks pretty good. I'm always like, whew, that's the grand reveal moment right there. Woo. So for the second um, tape off that we're gonna do, let me blow dry this just a smidge. We're gonna go the opposite way. You can use the same charcoal gray color or mix up just a slightly different shade, but you just don't want it to be black, okay? It can be the same as this color or lighter or darker. Okay. So I'm gonna tape off. Again, I kind of have to start taping on off the edge with this one because I don't have a super straight line. Bolin and Lynn Dallas in the house. Hey girls, look at lovely Lynn's. It's at late night where you guys are. A lot of you guys were commenting in my time zone. I thought maybe I'll have all West Coast folks tonight because it's like almost nine o'clock here. It's almost nine o'clock. I can tell it's volleyball season because I feel like every single night this week we've had something going on. Next week, we get to have the whole volleyball team come into the studio and paint. And that's going to be super fun. I don't know what they're painting yet. Last year, they came and everyone painted volleyballs and they put them on display in the gym. Um, but this year, I think they kind of want to do something different. So maybe initials or I don't know if you guys have anything cute ideas for volleyball players. But yeah, they put them up on the gym. We have a brand new high school that our, my daughter goes to. And so they have a cool place to display them up there. She just walked in. She showered. They won Tuesday night and tonight. Winners, winners. Yep. <laughs> Let's see if I can see some more comments. You guys are chatty tonight. I love it. I love it, guys, when you ask, answer, ask questions, answer the questions. <laughs> okay, so I've got it taped this way. So I repeated it just there's the top of the pumpkin. So we did our horizontal. Now we're going vertical. I gotta mix up a little more of my my mixture. I'm resourceful. I, I don't throw anything away, so I've got like all these little half cups I'm going to use. <laughs> and again, we're gonna do kind of the same coverage this way. So this is where it gets a little. Um, I think some some people. Sorry, <laughs> I thought I did wrong for a second. Some people stop at this second. Um, 
stripe. Okay, so what I've seen, I won't say it's technically wrong because this is whatever you like. This is, again, just my way of like how I figured out how I like uh, to, it like a little more rustic. But I've seen people do like charcoal gray and then black for the second thing, stripe, like the opposite direction, and then peel it off. And it's like just a really harsh um, contrast. And it doesn't give that over under effect of like a plaid or a gingham. Uh, so the third step of taping is really important in my mind. So, okay? So I don't care what you do for your first two <laughs> things, but you need to go to the third step if you like that true buffalo plaid look. Okay, so again, like thin coats. I do like to take a little bit more of black or the dark old charcoal and just kind of sweep that in there now that I've got full coverage. I want that like variated color. Does that make sense to y'all? Okay, Let's li we'll lift it up and we'll look how crazy this is looking here. So I'm just sweeping in little bits of black kind of along the edges of tape or whatever. Okay, just want to show y'all. But you can still kind of see the layer underneath, okay? So now I need to dry that and then we're gonna tape one more time. Mary, the measurements on this pumpkin are about, I want to say it's about 16 by 20. It's 16 tall and it's kind of wide and fat. Short and fat? I don't know. Short and wide? <laughs> um, Kimberly, you can get the pumpkins on our website. So we have this pumpkin, or if you guys saw the uh, planked pumpkins that we did, we heard that one. Sorry. Oh, John just came in with a measuring tape. Look at him. Okay, so we have this kind of pumpkin. Look at that one with buffalo pad. This is like the planked pumpkin, and I painted this. Well, one like this. This actually has like grooves like shiplap. Um, and this one's 18 by 18. And this one's on our website, finished and unfinished as well. What did he confirm on the measuring? It's probably, yeah, you know, like 20 and a half or like 16. About 16 by 20, he said. Hey, girl, hey, Pamela's in the house. <laughs> I'm just making a guy laughing at me. Huh? Oh. Okay, so Jamie, she commented on the Instagram earlier. She's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to paint some plaid. And she said, this is where she went wrong, is the uh, second coat, right? So you need, your first two coats should just be a lighter shade of the last coat. So see this? No, I've got it been over. So in this orange one, my darkest one is where they cross over. So these, like the large portion of the stripes going either way are kind of a shade lighter. And I kind of did three shades on the orange, which is fine. Um, and honestly, that's because usually I don't mix up enough of the secondary color and then I have to like color matchish. So I kind of have bright or muted stripes going horizontal and vertical. And then that check where they overlay is the most saturated of the colors, okay? So that's what we're gonna do here. So our pumpkin is mostly dryish. <laughs> uh, like I said, I don't even usually wait till it dries all the way, so. And you can try to save your tape. It's a little bit of a struggle for me when I'm live to do it and not trying to get paint on myself. So I'm using new tape every time, but um, if you can reuse it, then do it okay um let's see let's see i'm seeing if there's any more questions you guys are awesome if i missed a question let me know ella isn't the cup darling you can win the monogram so i pinned it to the top southerly splendid is giving away her little monograms and somebody's gonna win pumpkins with their own thing and i'll give away this pumpkin door hanger too so go comment let Catherine know that we love her <laughs> okay so this the tip for the third one okay I want to get one piece down it's going to go where there is still white on your background so you're gonna be able to see raised lines and recessed lines I'm just overlaying the tape where I can see the recessed lines I don't even have to measure see how you can kind of see the texture um, so right here oh there you go you can see it so I need to lay another piece of tape in that line so there's enough of a ridge on the pumpkin that I can just lay this tape for my third one to create this grid essentially right where I need it okay one more piece of tape 
And then we're going to create that little, we're going to do black in the little check. And then we're going to get the reveal. So it's a lot of taping and untaping. <laughs> I will say, um, I do have ambitions to do another um, plaid tutorial because we have, with, with uh, Chalk Couture, my Chalk Couture shop has a buffalo plaid transfer. So you just like lay it down on your white background and apply the chalk paste or ink and it's just, you just pull it up and it's done. Um, I don't think I have that right with me. It might be in my studio. But so that's an option for some of you where you're like, what the heck? You chalked me right out of plaid, Katie. <laughs> Erica says it's hard to paint plaid with toddlers. I feel ya. I feel ya. Okay, we've got pure black, right? On a little, little brush. And then I'm gonna paint the open squares now. So you can see all these squares where the lines intersect is where I'm gonna put black. And then we get to see, pull up all these bandages and see what's happening under there. So does this seem like something you can do? Did this take some fear out of it? We're taping one way, peel it up, tape the other way, then leave that down, and then tape back the first way. <laughs> Three steps of taping <laughs> for the perfect buffalo plaid, huh? And if your style is more clean or you want like a really crisp look, you can totally like, do two full coats of each color, um, dry it, and then remove the tape, and you know make sure it's fully dry before you put the tape down. But you know if you've got time for that in your life, <laughs> I think I had no choice but to embrace uh, distressed and <laughs> because of my impatient nature, probably. <laughs> hey, <laughs> my husband can hear me, and he just said, "What? Are you impatient? What?" <laughs> Getting the commentary from the peanut gallery in there. Yeah. But y'all love it. Y'all love it, right? Okay. I'm glad I can make it look easy, Erica. <laughs> A lot of ladies were asking for this tutorial, so I am happy to oblige. This is I did like a bunch of little signs the other day and kind of painted them each with a little bit of different plaid. Like I did um, just different shades of gray, 50 shades of gray on the background of a sign. And then I was able to do the black lettering on it and I really liked it. So, Rachel says, so stinking cute. You're so stinking cute. <laughs> okay, cool. Kenya, Kenyan is gonna try it. Yay. Yeah, if you guys paint plaid, totally let me know. I got a little sloppy with my plaid. Okay, so I'm peeling up. Peeling up what's still wet here. trash can. doesn't even have a trash bag in it. What are you doing, heckler? You didn't put me a trash bag in. What kind of ship are you running? <laughs> okay. I'm glad you love it, Renee. You're gonna love it. We don't even have the tape off yet and you already love it. You just get ready to tap the thumbs up and the hearts. Oh my goodness. There's the first. <laughs> Slides are to stick down and pull up. Jeez. Oh my goodness. You guys loving? Loving? What color do you think I should do the stem? And like, we could put a word on it. Not tonight, because I don't have any of that ready. <laughs> and it's already late. But help me decide a stem and letter color for this guy. It could be very Halloween, and we could go orange. Or... You know, do you like the blues? Like I showed you the one pumpkin. You can keep it kind of more farmhouse pumpkin. Stem and letter colors. Jenny that stuff like, oh yay! Okay, I'm picking up all my tape wad. You guys can see how thinking cute. Always wanna like move it 10 ways to make sure you can see. But doesn't that look awesome? I think it looks awesome. <laughs> I have a few little spots that have bleedy spots. So I usually try to like, while it's wet, take a smaller brush and touch those up. So I'm gonna 
I did my gray paint? Oh, there it is. I like to touch up why things are still damp. It's a little bit easier for me. If there's any touching up that needs done. I really only had one spot that I felt was crazy. Okay, I'm gonna see if you guys have any questions about this. I'm gonna let it kind of dry a bit. Okay. Oh, I'm stealing all the love. That's what I'm seeing. <laughs> all the love. Okay, so teal letters, orange letters. I saw a couple votes for each. Can I get paint back here? <laughs> it looks like I got it on my own. Okay, so orange letters. So Halloween kind of? Oh, Karen threw red in there just, just to make me happy, right? <laughs> Kimberly suggested gold. I also think metallic gold is really pretty. We could do that. That would be beautiful. Rose gold. Rose gold. Christine, we're soul sisters. She, she's, she's laughing so hard because I said I had no choice but to embrace distress. <laughs> she gets it, right? Distressed house, distressed furniture, distressed craft projects. I probably look distressed and disheveled tonight. <laughs> um, oh, I think Jody liked it even without a word. So I think it'd be pretty cute with a darn stinking cute bow or some like florals. That's pretty cute. Okay, so now if you guys paint pumpkins, I totally want to see them. <laughs> so, um, Look at you guys. That was so that was pretty fast. And if you're doing several of them, like for those of you that are painters or do door hangers and things, you could knock out several really fast. But um, you know, those of you who do them for yourself, this would be a fun crafty girls' night project. You can order some unfinished pumpkins from us, get some black and white paint, and you're good to go. Good to go. All right. Are one of you guys uh, gonna stop heckling me and help me shut off my video? We'll see. We'll see. Okay, don't forget to go over like Southerly Splendid. I did pin it in the comments. Give her a comment on the picture of the orange pumpkin with her monogram and let her know I sent you over and we'll pick some winners. And you guys can have the cute monogram. You can paint the cute pumpkin and it'll be a fun time. Look at a mess, a mess. Good night, y'all.